What up guys, it's Ramal for Life here today and I'm back with another video. Now today's video we're going to be reviewing episode 4 of She-Hulk. Now I know in my last episode I review, I stated that it was episode 4 when it was actually 3. I did mention it towards the end but yeah, it was episode 3, this was episode 4. Now this episode was kind of like the last where it was mostly about court scenes and stuff and it's to be expected since this show is about, you know, she Hulk being an attorney at law, so she's basically gonna be, you know, focusing on law stuff and lawyer stuff, and that's fine. But I think you should mix; they should mix in more, you know, of the comic book aspect, the superhero stuff, instead of just mainly focusing on that. They did have a little bit of a battle towards the end where, you know, uh, oh, the magician guy—I forgot his name—was like Johnny Blaze. Yeah, Johnny Blaze. Uh, cre uh, bought these creatures from another dimension and they started running amok inside you know his magic shop where or uh, you know his magic show and she had to basically stop them and you know help out Wong to get rid of them but personally if I'm being honest most of this episode it was just her going on like you know dating uh, like the dating website trying to get a match and then um, you know doing what's they call the lawyer work and stuff and going through that and that's fine but i think they should more focus on the comic book aspects and you know the superhero things and i know the writer said that this is not gonna be a superhero story it's gonna be about love it's gonna be about this and i was like okay that's cool but nobody's gonna really watch it of you're focusing on other things than the things that they want you know we come into marvel to see uh, you know fights we come to see you know setting up future events and stories and seeing you know all the characters from the comic books that we love you being shown through uh you know the the film and stuff and you know tv we didn't come here to watch her and her love life and you know countless boring co court scenes that most of us let's be honest i don't think most people really care about them and yes, you can talk about maybe like, you know, and Daredevil, because Daredevil was also a lawyer and he did have court scenes. But the difference between Daredevil's court scenes and this one is these ones are more goofy and less, you know, uh, you know, intense and thrilling. Whereas in Daredevil 1, they didn't mostly focus on just court scenes. Yes, they had a lot of legal talk and stuff like that, but that was around, you know, all the... That was just all around the, you know, the world itself in the fighting because majority of Daredevil was mainly focused on the threats in the city, the criminal underground was happening with that, and Daredevil, you know, coming to his own to fight them and take them out, but also, you know, trying to, you know, as a new hero, show off, you know, who he is and not be uh, ostracized as the villain and all this stuff. So they had a bunch of other inst interesting stuff uh, happening happening in the uh, in the episodes. Yes, they had court stuff, but those court scenes were not as much as you know their main focus on you know Daredevil being a superhero, him taking out bad guys, you know the big threats and what their plans are. Those are still a main focal point of the show. And even when we do talk about the court scenes, comparing that to She Hulk, the court scenes and you know. Daredevil were at least more uh, intense than this because this one is just like each episode is just some other court case and it's some goofy stupid thing happening which I'm fine with comedy but of all these court cases are just goofy there's not nothing special because if you're wasting most of your time on them these cases then like why were we watching it but yeah I think Dare Daredevil showed a good way to have a superior show with something like serious like uh, law and you know you know, being a lawyer and stuff in court scenes and stuff like that. But the way they did is they made those court scenes intense. I mean, look at the Punisher scene. That was that was an amazing, like, you know, amazing scene. Even though it was mostly about, like, you know, whole court dating and stuff, we as fans loved it because we just love seeing, you know, them showcasing, uh, you know, Frank Castle and who he is as a person, showcasing his morals and his beliefs, them trying to find a way to, you know, save him and stuff and get him out of there. But then him just breaking the entire case that, you know, Matt made for him and saying, hey, I don't, I'm not crazy. I don't have PTSD. I don't give a shit. I'm happy what I did. I knew what I did. I'm, I enjoy fucking killing those people. They deserved it. I absolutely love that. That scene was amazing. The court scenes in Daredevil... They're not as many, but the ones that they do have are, you know, very intense and very thrilling. Whereas this is just like, it's goofy as I can. It's like, um, when you watch, you know, like, say, like, a bigger show that has, like, monsters or enemies, there's always, like, the monster of the week type of thing. And that's how I feel about these court cases. They're not very serious. They don't have really any meaning. They're just monster of the week type of things. And it's like, they don't have a main focus story. And it's like, when you don't have that, it's like, why would anybody watch it, you know? So yeah, this 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 series already, we're only four episodes in, but there's not that many episodes in, you know, modern day TV, especially like these. 
I'm thinking there's like six or seven episodes. So if there's only like six or seven episodes, you're wasting the majority of these episodes literally on nothing. There's like no story being built up. Yes, we have the whole thing with uh, She-Hulk having her problems of having superpowers and, you know, trying to work in this new law firm and stuff to deal with this. But it's like, focus more on a main threat that there is there. You know, they had a, a little bit in the last episode where those guys with, you know, the Asgardian, uh, what's the thing called, construction working uh, equipment, were trying to take her out and take her DNA for somebody that was like, you know, wanted. And that's cool that they were building up to something, but I think they should have had more of a build up from the beginning. Like their, their focus is on other stuff and it just seems like a mess. Like I said, once again, talking about Daredevil since he's gonna be in the show anyway, Daredevil, the great thing about that show is it started off with a mystery, started off with these, you know, big threats. We start off with Wilson Fisk, Kingpin and his, you know, him running his umpire and, you know, the threats in there. But not only him, they had the hand, they had Lady Gao, they had uh, the other guys. I forgot what the other dudes' names were, but they had them and they were building up uh, to, you know, their threats. And we saw it throughout the seasons. But this show, it seems like, hey, that's not our main focus. Our main focus is, you know, showing Jen being, you know, uh, a lawyer and the stuff she's dealing with being a lawyer and as a She Hulk, which can be interesting. But I think they should also try to build up an actual story in the background. But they're not doing that. So there's no real backbones to the show. It's just bits and pieces here and there. So yeah, this episode, majority was just court. It starts off with a magic show. This guy named Johnny Blaze, which kind of reminded me of, uh, you know, Ghost Rider. Because I'm pretty sure his name is Johnny. Uh... Isn't his name Johnny Blaze? Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of confused because when I heard the name, I was like, what? But yeah, he was basically doing magic acts. Everybody was bored. They didn't care until this one drunk girl came up. He had her doing a magic trick and he pulled out the ring to do the circular thing. And I was just surprised. I was like, wait, he has this too? And then I was thinking to myself, I was like, can anybody just use this? I thought you need to have some magical training because we also saw, you know, uh, Ned from, um, you know, No Way Home. He was also doing it and he didn't have any training prior to this. But we do get explained later on that this guy was apprenticed uh, and, you know, it, all the way to the in Nepal temple with, uh, you know, Wong. But he was only there for a week and then he dropped out. But yeah, he does this. He sends her through there. She ends up in Wong's place with a heart in her hand. She says she had made a blood pact with, a, you know, a demon or whatever. He's watching The Sopranos. She kind of basically ruins it, which I thought was funny. Okay, I'll admit this. I absolutely loved Wong in this or also known as Wongers, which... <laughs> That was that was hilarious. I love Wong in this. The drunk girl, she was completely random, but I really liked her. I think she added a lot of uh, great humor, especially her playing off with Wong and you know being friends with her, with him and calling him Wongers and stuff. I thought that was fun. It was enjoyable, but everything else from this episode, there was really not nothing much to it. it, it her little scene was interesting. Uh, him, the magician guy, I really didn't care about him too much and his, you know, his story and his act. And then the whole thing was basically Wong saying, hey, look, he's misusing these rings and basically creating these portals can mess the fabric of reality and can destroy all of existence. So we cannot let in the hands of a guy who is very reckless and in da dangerous. And he's t uh, talking to, uh, you know, Jennifer Walters. He's like, hey, look, I need you to file a, 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 a law case, uh, you know, like, uh, a court case on him, sue him for it, saying you can't be doing these things, using it because you're gonna create all this, you know, problems. And they went to court, they tried to do it, and you know, there's a little bit of comedic scene there. And it wasn't really, really much, he got away with it, he left. Um, he basically went to do his magic act again, tried to do the same thing, and then created these little, got, got these little troll creatures that came from like doves, and they started messing up the show, and he needed, uh, he needed Wong's help, Wong came there to stop them. And then Wong needed She-Hulk, but She-Hulk was on a date. Now, let's talk about the date scene. We've seen this a lot in the trailer. This was a main focal point, talking about her love life, because apparently uh, a show about a woman who is the main lead has to have some love bullshit, which is kind of funny to me because all these, uh, you know, these oh, female writers and women all talk about like, oh, women aren't just for love and this and that, and like, we're t badasses and stuff too. But then they have their own show where they can have like a main lead, and their main focus is on her finding a relationship. It's like, what? It's just weird. But uh, yeah, she's going on dates on this, you know, fake Tinder thing. So she's trying to find guys that uh, match. And the reason she did, uh, she was doing this, but they also have a scene with a guy coming up being annoying. She's trying to do her work. Her friend is trying to help out with the work. And he's like trying to hit on her, getting her drinks and stuff and whatever. And personally, it wasn't that big of an offense, but for me, 
when I see shows like this, it feels like they're trying to reach a quota or something. Like, they're trying to always have a quota of having as many uh, douchebag guys as possible. Like, each episode of the show, they've had at least one or two guys that have said something out of pocket or done something just, like, douchey. And it's like, it just seems a constant, ga like, theme. It's like, okay, we get it. Some guys are complete assholes and whatever. But, like... They keep on doing it in every each episode, and I'm fine with that. You know, having some guys that are assholes, but it's like, let's be reasonable. Let's stop doing the extremities and always bringing up the worst of the worst every time. It's like, it's, it's just so. It was just so goofy. It was like they obviously forced forced him into the scene just so they can have that little complaint. It wasn't necessary. It didn't help out. It didn't progress the story. It was only there to be like, hey, look, look at how some guys act and treat women. It's like, ah. Uh, Really, do you guys have a, literally a quota of shoving in these type of dudes into it? I mean, literally the last episode they had those two guys. One guy was like belittling her and saying, oh, I forgot. I think it was belittling her about being a lawyer or being a superhero. And then those other dudes like, I would hit or whatever. And it's just like, come on, stop doing that. That shit is just corny as fuck. It's like obviously like, like over-exaggerated. But whatever. She does that. She goes on dates with all these other guys. All the guys are duds. Uh, this is a classic case. You know, you see this all in shows where... Somebody goes on a date, where's a guy or girl, and they go with a bunch of people that just don't fit it. Uh, this one, I guess, some might get a little more annoyed because, like, well, it's obviously a feminist narrative, and they might be just attack men, which I can see that. But uh, this is just a common thing you see in all, you know, you know, all stories where they have somebody trying to date and they're trying to fight the right one. Everybody else is has complete problems, and then there's a one that's perfect. Which she found the guy that we saw in the trailer, and that scene is still just so cringy about. I want to split the fries and she's like, oh, like, okay, just stop. Just don't pretend like you care about what he has to say. You care about somewhat of what he has to say. You don't want him to be a complete douchebag, but you don't care enough. You just care that he's good looking. And she does mention that when she's fighting the monsters, she's like, and he's really hot. Not that it matters, but it does, which, you know, that's something a lot of women say. They're like, oh, I don't really care about the personality. And I, I do believe that some do. But let's not pretend here and sit like and act like all women don't. Majority of women do care about looks, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with caring about looks. But when people try to do that shit, or they're like, "Oh, I don't care about looks," and pretend like, "Okay, that's stupid." When she did that, I was like, "Okay." And then when she admitted, I was like, "Now nah, that's more reasonable. I at least respect that more." She's not trying to be like, "Oh, I don't care about that at all." She she knows that that's what she's her main focus was and that does become play a, uh, a part later on in this episode but yeah she basically what's the thing called um uh, it, it, she she just admits that and then uh this guy they were trying to build him up as the good guy and stuff but let's be honest he was just a fuck boy that was uh, good looking to her and she didn't care about the stuff he was playing the cards right he was basically the class act of you know the girls when they're like he was a nice guy, but he tricked me. It's like, well, it was blatantly obvious he was a fuckboy. It's like, his tricks weren't that deep. It was very surface level. He, like, put a little bit more effort than other dudes. It was very obvious who he was. It was just that you got, you know, got blinded by his looks. But happens to guys all the time, too. So it's just people being stupid in general. But, yeah, she goes, and then she's, like, you know, in her She-Hulk form. He, he, she's trying to get matches and stuff in her She-Hulk form. She's not doing it in her regular, like, you know, human self. And she does this, the guy's waiting, she comes back, and then they sleep together and stuff, and then she comes back, and he comes out, and he's acting very distant towards her. Uh, he's like, oh, who are you? She's like, oh, this is my human side, and he's like, she was like, wanting to, you know, be, push the, you know, the situation more further with him, and he obviously didn't show any interest, he was obviously quintessential type A fuckboy, obvious as hell to anybody with the, you know, a, either a fully functioning brain, or somebody that doesn't think what you know j just being horny or whatever so he obviously not that's not going anywhere he just used her and then he left so i guess this is not the end of her looking for love there's still gonna be more episodes of her looking for other guys possibly a lot of douchebags and then trying to find the right one or whatever but towards the end of the episode she uh she watches tv and she sees that titana the woman in the first episode has been released from prison and now she sends somebody to her house and the guy is, gives her a uh, paper that she's getting sued for copy infringement by stealing the name She-Hulk, which to be honest to me, it's like, what? Okay, what? Like, 
first of all, she Hulk was she was named by the public, so that doesn't make sense. Second of all, where did you own the rights to the word, name She Hulk? I just don't get that. So I'm guessing next episode is going to be focusing on that. Another, you know, monster of the week court cases. I will uh, dub it as. It's just going to be this show is just going to be countless. Each episode is just going to be a different court case. And it's going to be another stupid one that's just goofy and like has no real anything to it. I think this one's going to be even dumber. It's just going to be her fighting for her name. The, a name even that she didn't even like. But she's going to be fighting against a super villain about a name. Like really? Is that that interesting? Give us a main thing. And then the end of the episode they had Wong hanging out with the other drunk girl again. And they're just being friends talking about like drinks and stuff. Which she seems like a complete alcoholic, which is funny because Wong seems a more serious guy and she's just a drunk, uh, like, valley type of girl uh, stuff. But yeah, if I'm being honest, the best part of this episode was definitely Wong and the the drunk girl. Uh, I really didn't care about the guy that did the magic, really couldn't care about him. Uh, I didn't care about the court case, didn't care about her dating. I'm not watching the superior shows to see people dating. I mean, you can have dating aspects in it. Daredevil even had it, countless shows had it, but it shouldn't be your main focal point. That's one of the big problems that CW had with their TV shows. They went from focusing on threats and, you know, superheroes and, you know, them dealing with society and all this other stuff. They went from that to, hey, let's see these characters hook up. Let's see this character's relationship. These characters talk about love. They're like, shut the fuck up. We're not here for that shit. We're here for superior shit. If we were here for some lovey-dovey bullshit, we would have watched a rom-com. We're not here to watch a fucking rom-com. We're here to watch superheroes do su superhero shit, you know? You can have that shit sprinkled out in it, but that whenever that becomes a main focal, that's when you see a series, you know, gonna fuck up, you know? Because Arrow, they did great, and then they started just focusing on too much on, you know, Oliver and Felicity's relationship, which I could give two fucks about. It should have been Oliver and, you know... You know, Black Canary like in the comics, but they focused on that. Then you have Flash with Iris and stuff, which I never really cared about Flash show, but a lot of people liked it until towards the end of seasons where they focus too much on that. And superhero shows, I think at this point we should stop with the relationship shit. You know, you can have one or two here sprinkled out throughout the series, but don't make that main focal point. That's one of the reasons why I loved, uh, you know, Daredevil because it did have relationships in it, but that wasn't the main thing. You can have it. But just, you know, have it as a side thing. It was a side thing. Daredevil's love life was not the main thing. It was just a side part of it. Everything else was. The only time it became a main thing was when it was him and Elektra, which in the comics, they're a thing. So it makes sense. But in this show, it, the only real thing that it had was him fighting between her, him and her. Her, she's more brutal, more violent, and willing to murder. And him, he's not willing to kill anybody. So there was more than just a relationship. There was a moral dilemma between the two. They love each other, but they they think differently. And Daredevil can be with somebody like her. So that was, you know, interesting and stuff. They added some interest in it because there was additional things to it instead of just, you know, a relationship. And then, you know, like, countless other shows, like, like, like uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. had some situations where there's relationships. But the majority of the show was not about relationships. And guess what? It was an amazing show. You can have it. Just do it the right way. This show is mainly focusing on it. And when I heard the author, you know, the writer saying that, I was just like, oh, you really... Uh, it, it pisses me off because it makes me think like this. Okay, you took, a, you know, a superhero IP and don't want to focus on superhero shit. You want to focus on the love shit. But she said, she's not going to be focusing on the superhero stuff. The fuck are you taking this then for? If you wanted to make a show, a show about love, you could have made one of these endless uh, shows that are out there about love. You could have had a rom-com. You could have had just a romantic show. You could have had just one of those stupid soap operas or whatever. You could have had those type of shows. Why take a superhero thing and then not make it superhero and focus on more of that? That that pissed me off. I was like, you're saying the, the, the thing that's connected to a franchise about superheroes, you're not going to be focusing on superheroes. You're going to be focused on love. When you could have done that for a fucking show that literally focuses on that. It's just a waste. I don't know why they picked these writers. If they picked actually a competent writer, they could have made the show more about superior stuff and her struggle, but also have some love in it, but not be the main thing. Th that just pissed me off. So yeah, this episode was complete boring. It was a snooze fest. It was, it was complete shit. I would, you know, I don't want to usually, I don't usually rate episodes, but I'll give like one and a half to two out of five. For this episode. This episode was just boring. Of the entire show is going to be like this. Where it's just boring little stuff that nobody cares about. 
this show's not going to make it past season one. Let's be honest. It's it's already a, it's dead and it's dead on arrival. It has nothing to it. Even if you don't like the other Marvel shows, at least the other Marvel shows had something to it. This one has literally nothing. They need to start picking up the story and actually have something developing, or just not do it because nobody's here to watch her go on dates and you know talk to these other guys or countless court scenes of pointless bullshit that we don't care about. So yeah. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this review. I will be reviewing the rest of the season. Don't know if I'll be reviewing the second season if there is one. Hopefully there's not. Because this shit is just... It's just boring. There's really nothing to it. Hopefully they bring back Bruce. Hopefully... I just can't wait for them to bring back Daredevil. Like, let's be honest. Most of us are watching this for what they're going to do with the Hulk. And to see, uh, you know, Daredevil and how he's going to be treated. Uh, I hope they, do, they keep him the way he was. I hope, you know, they... You know, the when the Daredevil show comes out, that it's not like this. I hope it's amazing because I cannot, I cannot watch it if it turns like this. And it'll be very sad that you know they had such a great thing going on on Netflix and then being ruined by Disney Plus and stuff. Uh, but yeah, that's it for this review. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And, uh, stay tuned for next time.